Hi, I'm Nick Agar. Welcome back to Dictum's Workshop, where today we'll be discussing the detail gouge. The main distinction with the detail gouge is the shallower flute and the thicker stock of bar beneath the flute. There are various shapes for these. This one has a more square section to the stock and another one I have in front of me here has a more rounder section. Both give a slightly different grind even with the same recipe. The squarer section we could argue that perhaps we have a slightly narrower cheek below the cutting edge and this may reach into an even tighter area and with the rounder bar we have a slightly fatter cheek just below the cutting area with a slightly bigger stock of bar in this instance it may be good for reaching further over the tool rest. Let's put them to use. Here we have a standard spindle gouge alongside my preferred version of the detail gouge and you'll see that the detail gouge on the left not only is a longer steel but also has a much longer handle. This benefits you in two ways. The handle can be held against the body and for security and of course the longer shaft sticking out of the front of the tool means that I can get to a much deeper point on the project with ease and security. Beautiful to see how the tool can reach so far over the tool rest with minimal fuss or vibration. Secondary bevel is out of the way. Let's try it from the other side. Just feels so smooth. Keeping the bevel on the wood, driving it all the way down, so I can't go any further. So this tool with the thinner cheeks, is going to reach just that little bit further down to the bottom of the cut. On the other side. So let's now go and look how we sharpen these. So out of the packet, the factory grind on this tool is around 35 degrees. To sharpen the factory grind on this tool, we're going to use the following recipe. On the Tormek hole A, on the TTS 100, and in the jig, the SVD 186, we're going to put the tool on at a projection of 75 millimeters and a setting of number two. Starting in the middle of the wheel, Roll the tool over, use all the wheel when possible, trying to keep an even shape, and soon you will have a sharp edge. This is still the factory grind on this tool, and if we wish to match it up, there are generally three different diameters of wheel we'll be sharpening against. 150, 200, 250 millimeters, for example. If I'm going to use this system, then the movement on this leg will dictate the front bevel angle, this part of the gouge, and the V-arm, which slides in and out, will dictate the side angle of the bevel. So we put the two together, choosing Somewhere in the middle for my protrusion, I'm going to go for 65 millimeters in this instance. Place it in the V-arm, move it until I have contact on the top edge and roll it over and see whether I meet. Now I need to adjust this one back just a little so that it's touching on the side. And with another small adjustment on the front leg, I now have contact all the way around the tool 
and I can sharpen. This method will also suit many other grinds. Here is the factory grind on the detail gouge put to use. So as we can see, the factory grind on this particular detail gouge is usable. But if we now put a fingernail grind with a secondary bevel, it will become far more versatile. So if we wish to change from the factory grind, such as this detail gouge has on it, to a fingernail grind with a secondary bevel, we'll show you the recipe for this. You should be looking for a bevel angle between 25 and 35 degrees, and in our recipe, we will have a bevel angle of 35 degrees. So let's take this larger detail gouge, factory grind, and put a fingernail grind on it. First of all, I'm going to have a protrusion of 65 millimeters, and I've set the Wolverine jig at the back of notch number three. Placing the gouge on the jig so I have near enough the original bevel contact as this comes out of the packet at 35 degrees it's an easy target to look for continue to grind until you achieve the desired fingernail shape And as always, we must hone the edge of the tool. Using a diamond hone, being careful to keep it flat to take away these visible feathers that have been caused by the grinding. You see there's only a very small feather of steel to be removed from the edge. Having sharpened our fingernail profile on the top of the gouge, we're now going to put a secondary bevel beneath that simply by moving the V-arm forwards a small amount and we will now continue to grind away our secondary bevel. So, here we have secondary bevel beautifully ground on and we're ready to use the tool. To sharpen this same profile on the Tormek we have a slightly different approach. Because the TTS 100 does not necessarily give us the exact replication of what we've just produced it's necessary to use a block to give us the distance of the bar from the wheel. So in this instance I've set the jig to setting number two. My protrusion is 65 millimeters and with the block giving me the distance on this arm, I now lock it into place and I can follow exactly the profile I've just put on the tool. To place the secondary bevel using the Tormek, very simply loosen the wheel at the back of the jig, push it forwards, lifting up onto the wheel and grind the secondary bevel. Try and use all of the stone, you don't wish to put a ridge in the front of the stone. And the nice thing about the black stones is you don't have to press so hard. So having sharpened the tool, it's now necessary to hone the edge. 
I'm going to take the universal support arm out, turn it around to the other side and winding the wheel back a little so I've got room to move because this diameter of wheel is smaller than the stone. I'm going to put this in and just line up the bevel by eye and now I'm good to hone and polish that edge. Plenty of pressure as you do so. Don't forget your honing paste. So let's hone the inside of the flute. Carefully bearing down on the honing wheel. Doesn't take too long to polish that inside edge. We now have a razor sharp tool ready to use. Now we can see that with the fingernail grind and the secondary bevel, meaning I can get into a tighter spot. If the bevel was longer here, then it can sometimes be in my way into a tighter area. Particularly if I have to overhang the tool rest a long way. Let's move this out of centre so that I have to do just that. Here you can see the secondary bevel is giving me greater access into a tighter area where I'm able to swing the tool further over as I roll it to the bottom of the cut. It's a huge advantage of this. And with the fingernail grind, I can choose to pick up the cut just below the center of the flute as I follow the cut in to the center. And even on something that's eccentric like this, I'm not being bounced off the bevel so badly as if I had it entirely running from the front edge to the back. So I hope you've enjoyed these sharpening tips from here at Dictum's Workshop. Enjoy your turning and stay sharp.